So what does it really mean to be a pageant gal? And what does it really mean to be a pageant gal who is in the pageant gal community? This live is about to change your life. It's about to change the trajectory of your life in so many ways. And I am so excited to bring this to you. So first of all, hello, my name is Maria, the pageant gal, and I am so excited to re-welcome you to this space. If you are here on live, drop your crown in the chat. If you are watching the replay, drop your crown, put like everything away because this is going to be a live that you want to pay attention to because this is going to change everything about the way we move forward from this moment on. So for those of you who have joined this free Facebook community, you know that one of the first things that I tell you to do, whether you join and you see the, the pinned post or you join the Win the Crown membership and you see it in our member portal, I tell you to introduce yourself. And so what that means is you create your post on our Facebook feed, on our Facebook group feed, and you use the hashtag, I am a pageant gal. And we've probably had about 20, maybe 30 women make their posts. We were almost at 300 people within this community and we're going to have like probably 3000 in the next couple of months because this is going to blow up. And about 20 to 30 women have used the hashtag I am a pageant gal. And then when they post, we have like a flood of other pageant gals coming on to their comment section, sending them love, support, following each other on Instagram, on Facebook, doing connections and collaborations. Like this community is truly the best thing ever. It is thriving. And if you want to be a part of it, and if you want to know what it means to be a part of it, then listen up. Because I realized I was like, it happened yesterday. I was like, the pageant gals don't even really know what it means to be a pageant gal. Like they are using this declaration, this hashtag, like they are crowning themselves a pageant gal. And I was like, do they even really know what it means to be a pageant gal? Comment yes, if you're ready to know what it really means to be a pageant gal in this community. And this is going to not only take you through a journey of how the pageant gal was born, how the pageant gal community was born, but what it really means to be a leader in this space, to be a queen in this space. Comment yes if you are ready to go there with me. But here's the thing, and I even dropped this in our free Voxer, not Voxer, sorry, in our free Instagram broadcast track because we just created one of those a couple of days ago that after you watch this, your life is likely not going to be the same. And that's gonna be something that you have to realize that going back to the way that you were is really not going to be an option after this. And I think that was something that was stopping me from sharing this message for a while because I thought to myself, well, if the pageant gals, if they don't go back to what they know, where are they going? And that's where we come in. That's where this community space comes in. And so there are five points to being a pageant gal that literally all just came rushing into me that I had to share with all of you. And we're gonna go into them together and they are going to change your life. Because if you're part of this community as you are, you embody these five things. So to give you some context, I started my Instagram page the pageant gal originally after I held the title Miss Canada 2018. So it was about March of 2019. I was passing on my title and I thought to myself over the year, I had several other pageant accounts that would pop up Canadian specific ones that would start sharing my photo as I was Miss Canada. And I would follow them for a bit. They would be like hyping up girls and then they would go dead. And then another one would pop up and they'd be hyping up girls, posting, giving all the stuff and then they go away. And I saw many come and go throughout that 12 month frame and even a little bit before that. And so come the end of my national title holder reign, I told myself that I was going to start up a page, except I wasn't gonna start and stop and then go away and disappear and ghost everybody on the internet. I was gonna be the page that starts and doesn't stop. I was gonna be the page that supports women and doesn't stop supporting them. And I was gonna be the one that keeps going that they could always rely on to come to for insight, motivation, support, community, whatever it is that they needed. And so in March of 2019, the page, the Instagram page, that's really how this all started, was Best in Canadian Pageantry. And then very quickly, as 
I started to grow throughout that year, I realized that, okay, it's not just Canadian women that I'm supporting. Like there are women all around the world that I'm starting to work with, that I'm starting to know who are starting to find me. We need to find an identity, a community name that really supports and encompasses every pageant gal around the world. And so I was sitting, I was at my fiance's house, his parents' house when he lived there. This was like coming to me on a Sunday night. I was sitting on their ground. I think we were watching a movie. It was like December. So we'd already been, had the page up and running for like nine months. And I was like, what is the name? Like, what is the name that we are going to call this? And at the time, again, it was just literally a Facebook group or not a Facebook group. Facebook group hadn't started. It was an Instagram page. My coaching had just started. I had like three clients at that time. And the name, the pageant gal came to me. It came to me and it stuck so hard and so deep. And this is why it starts with point number one. So the first thing is that a pageant gal, being part of the pageant gal community and you being a pageant gal, you claiming that you are a pageant gal means that you are different than everybody else and you know it. Because when I heard the pageant gal, and no one said that name, I don't use the term gal in my life. I don't even hear a lot of people say it, but the minute I heard it, I was like, that's different. That is different. You are somebody who knows that you're different. You know you're not like everybody else. And y'all like this is how insane and crazy I am. I went on Instagram today and I looked up the hashtag, hashtag pageant girl, right? That would have been so easy to make the pageant girl Instagram account. The pageant girl, pageant girl hashtag has over two, 461,000 uses. Everyone knows what pageant girl is. Pageant girls are everywhere. There's like hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands. I looked up the hashtag pageant gal and there are just over 500 uses. You are not like everybody else and you know it. And maybe up until this moment, you haven't even like said it out loud, but part of this community and part of knowing that you are in this space, because there are other Facebook groups, there are other coaches, there are other lives happening right now that you could be on their live. You could be learning from them. You could be in their community, but you know that there is something within you that we mirror to you that shows you, you are not like everybody else. You are not like 462,000 people on the internet. You are like the 500, you are like the 1%. There's something different about you and you know it. You look at other people and you think, I'm not like that. Like there's something special about me. Even if I don't know what it is, even if I haven't totally like owned it or seen it yet, you know that there's something different about you. And I remember thinking this throughout the duration of my life and it felt weird to be like in grade school being like, there's something different about me. In high school, there's something different about me. Even in university, like there's just something different about me. Even when I was living like the most boring, average, mundane life, I knew that there was something in me, which is why when I had a wake up call in my life that was like, hey Maria, you're literally not supposed to be like everybody else. I already knew it and I already believed it. And it was easier for me to go and do different things you know you are different. You know you don't even wanna be like everybody else because there's something special about you that you want to harness and you want to own and you wanna live out every day. You don't want to just blend in with everybody. And if you do, that's okay. But being a pageant gal means that you know you are different. You were born to be different, even if you've never truly understood it or seen it. And this being different, this is why I say I'm like, there's no reason why I should be a four-time pageant title holder. There's no reason. There's no reason I should have a community of 75,000 on all of our social media. There's no reason why there have been already 12 people on live, five on a Thursday, 5 p.m. on a Thursday here, almost 300 on our, in our Facebook group here, women joining from around the world. Other than the fact that I know I'm different. I know I'm not like everybody else. I know I'm not like every other coach. And that's why when you come to my page, when you come to my Facebook group, when you come to this live, you know you don't get the same old song and dance like everybody else does. 
You know it's not fluffy quotes and be yourself and all of that. You know that we are different and you know that you are different. And because I know and believe that you are different, I'm not gonna say all the same fluffy, cheesy BS that you hear everywhere else on the internet. I know that you're different. So the first thing, the first like true trademark of being a pageant gal in this community is you know and own that you're different, even if right now everything around you looks the same and normal and like everybody else. You know there's something special inside of you that is ready to be like awaken and born. And maybe you don't know where that leads. Maybe you don't know what it looks like in the outer world, but you know it's true. And maybe from this moment on, you are going to realize that and start treating yourself like you are a different type of queen, that you're not supposed to be like everybody else. And you'll start to see how the world around you is going to respond and notice that you are different because you've owned it. If you don't realize that you're different, that you're special, that you're part of that 1%, how are you going to go to the top? How are you going to be that queen that everybody looks up to? It starts by knowing that you're different. The second point to being a pageant gal, to truly claiming that you are a pageant gal in this community is that you don't like to move the way everybody else moves. You like to create your own path. Doing the same thing everybody else does, like maybe you've done it before and you're like, ick. You don't want to do things the way everybody else does it. Not only do you believe that you're different, but you move differently. You like to take a different path. Doesn't mean that you're a rebel, but it just means that when you see other people doing something and then you're like, oh, well, I should be doing that. You don't even think that you should be doing that. You're like, why didn't I do that first? How can I go do my own thing and do it even better in a way that's like totally unique and innovative to me? I'll tell you a quick story. So there, I believe it was on my like yearly to-do list last year, I had written that I wanted to work with a massive pageant photographer, like a very renowned, very well-known pageant photographer. I had my international title. It all made sense. I never acted on it. I knew I'd always seen him, followed him, all of those good things. And I had always said like, oh, I'd love to work with him, love to work with him. This year, I started seeing multiple, last year and this year, I started seeing multiple women in Canada work with this photographer, like fly out, drive out to go and work with him and see him. And now you start seeing all their photos pop up, different title holders, different contestants, coaches. And immediately I thought to myself, Maria, you should have done that first. You should have done that first because that dream, that goal was in your heart like years ago. And now if you go do it, which you can, I could have, I can go do it at any point, but now you're just following everybody else. It's like you almost needed somebody else to go and do it in order for you to give yourself permission to do it. Meanwhile, you could have been the permission. My queen, if you are here, you know you're meant to go first. You know that you're not supposed to be following everybody else. In fact, you know you're supposed to be doing things a different way. Even if it doesn't totally make sense, even if nobody else in your area has done it, you immediately know when you do something and you start seeing other people around you do it, you know that it was because of you. You know it wasn't a coincidence. You start wearing a certain brand designer and then people in your area, in your circle, start wearing that same designer, you know it was because you went first. How much different would you be if you started moving differently? If you didn't start doing things because you saw other people doing it, but you created your own path? How would that look and how would that feel? I have a hair that's like hanging off my shoulder here. <laughs> you being in this community as a pageant gal means that you like to move in a different way even if it doesn't make sense. Even if other people tell you that doesn't make sense, that's confusing. You shouldn't go down that path. You shouldn't start that. You need to go here. This is where everybody's going and you know in your heart and soul because you're different that you're meant to go in a different way. You're meant to go down a different path. I told myself, I was what, 25? And I said, I want to be an international title holder. It might not look like me going to Miss Universe or Miss World. So you know what? I'm going to go down a different path. No, not many people go this way, but you know what? I'm going to do it. And I was the first Canadian in 10 years to win an international title at a pageant, at the number one pageant voted on pageant planet. You move differently. You go down a different path. And again, maybe you haven't gone down that different path, but you think about it and you want to. And your intuition tells you you should, but maybe you've been like too geared and too conditioned to keep doing the same old thing that other people are doing. But in your heart, you just, you always wonder like, what would it look like to go that way? 
to be the first, to not be so afraid to do something first. And then by the time you actually have the courage to go and do it, 10 people have already done it. And then you're like, well, that's less exciting now. You know you're different and you know you're meant to go first. The second point is you're meant to do things differently, move differently, and lead your own path versus following what other people are doing. If this is resonating, if the first two points, we have three points to go. If the first two points are resonating, I want you to drop a crown in the comments if, you, if you're hearing this, if this is hitting on a different level of what it means to be in this community, why you're here and not at a different coach's live or in a different coach's group or workshop right now. The third point to being a pageant gal, I literally have this all written out on my notebook today. I was like, <sighs> went crazy. The third point to being a pageant gal is that you have a story to share. Even if it's not a, like a hard or a difficult or a painful story, you just can't help but feel like people need to hear your story because of what you've done in your life, what you've overcome, no matter what level or it doesn't have to be traumatic or not, but there's something about your story that you're like, this needs to be shared. Like this is significant. This is important. And you know, that it matters. You know your story matters. And you know that changing and owning your story and like extracting the lessons and sharing it with other people is like the key to changing the world. It's the key to you winning your pageant, to you getting the sponsorships, the communities on social media, the people who are supporting you and following you. Even if your story doesn't feel big or impactful to you, you know and you feel like in your heart and soul, you are meant to share your story. And that feels so taboo because people have told you all your life, you shouldn't share that. Shh, you need to be quiet. You, you shouldn't be talking about these things. Nobody wants to listen. Who would listen to your story? But yet, even through those, those messages and those voices, you're like, no, this is what, this is my story and it deserves to be told and it needs to be told. In fact, me withholding my story is a disservice to the world, is a disservice to the people who need to hear it. If you think about the story you've all heard about me, my story really doesn't go that deep. I picked a career in university that I didn't totally love. I lived a boring life for about three years. I just settled and did whatever that I thought I had to do. School, part-time job, boring relationship until one day I went to Mexico and I came home. I hated all the photos and I was like, Maria, you're supposed to be a queen. You're not living like a queen. And then I changed my life. I found pageantry and I won four pageant titles in five years. And now I'm an international coach, speaker, and queen. It's really not that deep, not that deep, but you know what I do? I own my story and I share it. I own my story and I share it. And I believe that it is the best gift I give to the world is the fact that I share that story. Even though it's not super painful and super difficult, you know that you have a story to share. What is your story? Do you even know what your story is? Maybe you just know you're meant to share something and you're meant to have a really significant and impactful life, whether it's like through pageantry or through some other avenue, like your career or something else that you're doing. But maybe you don't even know what your story is. Maybe you haven't even taken the time to think about what your story is. And listening to this, you're slowly giving yourself like that download of I have a story that I should be sharing. And every day I don't share it. I'm actually doing a disservice. I'm not living in my full truth. I'm not having the biggest impact I can. I see so many women who want to win a pageant, who want to go to stages like Miss World, Miss Universe, and they don't even know their story. They don't even share their story. People don't even know them. You want hundreds of followers on social media. You want thousands of dollars of sponsorship, but you don't even know or share your story. So how are people supposed to know, love, and want to support you? The third mark of being a pageant gal is you own you know and you share your story. No own share. Maybe it's in that order. So the first three points. You're different and you know it. You're meant to do things differently. You want to go down a different path. You want to do different things that other people aren't doing, even if it doesn't make sense, even if nobody else has ever done them, even if no one's told you to go do them. And you know that you want to be sharing your story. And maybe up until this point, your like your life has felt like it's been missing something and it's been missing that piece of significance in sharing what you have done, what you've gone through, what you've done. The fourth mark 
a being of Haji God. I want to make sure I don't mess up the last two. The fourth mark. The last two, all of these, all of these are absolutely massive. These next two, probably the bigger, the bigger ones. So the fourth point of being a pageant gal in the pageant gal community is that you know you're meant to lead a big life. A big life. Like, queen. Like, you sit here and you think, like, I should have the best wardrobe. I should be winning the pageant. Like, I should be a six-figure business owner, a seven-figure business owner. Like, you know it is like your birthright to have total abundance in your life. You should be in the healthiest and happiest relationship where you are just like giddy like a child that has like the most intimate relationships. You know that you're meant to have the travels that when you post, I'm looking for people to support me, you should have 10 businesses being like, what can we do for you? That money should constantly be hitting your bank account so that you never even worry about investing in yourself. You never even have to ask if it's in your budget or if you can afford it. You know you can because abundance is your life. Everything around you is abundant. Everything that you do, everything that you create, everything that you bring in. You know collaborations, opportunities to travel are just part of your nature. You're supposed to live a really big life. How are you supposed to win a pageant and have opportunities like go to New York Fashion Week, win a cruise, get a thousand dollar scholarship if you don't believe that you are meant for it all. And again, maybe it's not here right now. Maybe you don't physically see it, but you know it's on its way and you know it's meant for you. I can't tell you how many times over the last couple of years, especially when I was on my journey to winning an international title that I would look at people with big social media followings. And I by no means have a big social media following like through my Instagram. And I remember looking and thinking at like all these like other bigger, you know, pageant competitors and queens that had really big followings that would just post like nothing. They would post like a selfie and then another selfie and then another selfie. And you knew nothing about them other than they posted like photo shoots of them but they had like 100,000 followers and people wanting to send them and commenting. And I remember thinking like, I should have that. Not I should have like the nice photos or different things like that, but that level of influence and impact I've always known. I'm like, I could hold that. And you know what I would do if I had 100,000 followers like on Instagram, TikTok, I would impact them. I would use my voice. I would share my story. I would show them what's possible for them. I would never take advantage of it. I've just always known I'm meant to live a big life. Queen, do you know and own that you're meant to live a big life? That you're never supposed to worry about bills. You're never supposed to worry about, is the guy going to text you back? Because hell yeah, he is. And if he doesn't, you don't even notice. You're already living your life. Do you dream of having things like travel opportunities falling into your lap? Speaking on big stages, just coming right into your DMs. People messaging you saying, hey, I see you're going to this competition. Can I send you an outfit to wear? It can't happen if you don't believe it first. And again, this isn't a training to tell you believe it or not. You either believe it or you don't. And that's the cornerstone of being a pageant gal. You know you're meant to live a big life. Again, if you see what I come from, I don't come from like travels every single year and a ton of designer clothes. A lot of my closet is the clothes I had from like 10 years ago. And that's it. But abundance wasn't the physical things that I had, in, I had in my life, it was like an energetic frequency that I live every single day. And because of that, that's how more opportunities come my way. That's how I'm able to lead a big life. And I still think we're just like scratching the surface of the bigness that we're doing in the pageant gal community. It's going to get a lot bigger. And you know what? When it does, we're ready for it. So you know the fourth point of being a pageant gal in the pageant gal community is that you know you're meant to live a big life and you don't feel selfish saying it or asking for it because you know you're meant for it. You know when it comes, you can handle it. You're going to be grateful for it. You're going to use it properly. You're going to be present. You're going to be so excited. You're going to want to share this with other people. Not from being selfish, but because you know 
it's part of like your identity that you should. You should have all of the bigness. You should win the crown and have all of the amazing things that come with it. Like cruises and wardrobe and stationery and all of these amazing things. You know you're meant to live a big life. And again, maybe people have told you that's wrong. But in your heart, you're like, well, how could this be wrong? How could this be wrong? If I'm doing good, if I'm sharing good, if I stand for good, abundance is your birthright and you know you're meant to live a big life. So the first four points of being a pageant gal, like what it really means to be a pageant gal, and this is your sign right here, before we go into the fifth point that is going to shake some of you, go and make your hashtag I am a pageant gal post in our Facebook community if you haven't already. And heck, if you have, go and make your new one. You're gonna use the hashtag I am a pageant gal. Share who you are, where you're from, what you're about, where you're going, tell us. We already have the most amazing women here who want to support you, who want to see you thrive. Give them a reason. If you want people to follow you, give them a reason to. Be the person who's going forward, who knows she's different, who's taking the community with her. We all want to go with you. So if you haven't already, post in our Confident Queens United, our Facebook group here, hashtag I am a pageant gal. If you've already been resonating with the first four points, with a deeper understanding of what it means to be a pageant gal, in this identity, in this community. Share a photo of you, where you're going, if it's a competition, a platform, like what's next for you so we can all follow along. And share your Instagram handle so we can fall in love with you in your own social spaces. Are you ready for point number five? There's five points of being a pageant gal in the pageant gal community. So the fifth point, and I truly believe the worst thing a pageant gal can feel or experience is boredom. You do not want to be bored. In fact, you want to be challenged. You are ready to be challenged. And maybe up until this point, you've been bored with life. And so I want to ask you, as a pageant gal who knows that she likes to be challenged because when I'm challenged, I change, I elevate, I refine, I go bigger and harder. And I step into my bigness and all these other things and I rise and I become stronger and I lead a bigger movement and I speak louder and I do more amazing things I didn't know I could do. But are you right now living the life that you created that you love waking up to? Do you have a platform that you lead and you're so passionate about and you speak about it? And at night you put your head on your pillow and you can barely sleep. You're so excited and so grateful and you can't wait to wake up the next day to do it all over again. And when you speak in interview, you speak with so much life and vibrancy and you're telling the judges about who you are and the amazing things that you do. That you don't have time to talk about basic fluffy quotes and phrases because you're so like enthralled with talking about your life and how amazing it is that you created this and that you get to live it and maybe it's not all perfect right now but you're working on it and you're overcoming different challenges because big things are coming your way are you living the life that you created or are you living the life that you're settling for before i really became maria in pageantry before I even went on a trip to Mexico and realized that I needed to change my life, I worked at a home care agency. I don't know if everybody has these in their area, but we have home care agencies. You go into people's homes and like you help them with personal care. So I was doing this in my third year of university. And I would, one of the clients I had, we would need two people to go in and do the care. And we would go in three days a week. And I worked a couple days with this one woman. And each time, I didn't know anything about her. She told me she was like new to the area. And when we would talk during these calls, our client was nonverbal. So we would talk during, not during the calls, during these like work hours that we would have with this client. And she would ask me just different things. She used to be a nurse. So she would ask me about nursing and like my career and my education that I was going through. And I remember saying to her, oh, well, you know, like the first couple of years were hard. Like the first three year, two and a half years were hard, but now I'm like really starting to get it and I like it. 
Like I'm really starting to get it. I can tell like I'm doing well in my clinicals. My professor likes me. They're giving me good feedback, all of these things. So yeah, I like it. And she said, I will never forget. She said, no, you don't. No, you don't actually like nursing. It sounds like you're tolerating it. it. Sounds like you're doing okay in it. Like you're getting some type of like validation that you're good at it and that you're getting it, but you don't, you don't like nursing. And I was like, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, who are you? I was like, yeah, I do. Like, okay, maybe I'm not like in love with it, but I'm liking it and I'm learning to like it. And she was like, you can't learn to like something you don't like. She said, if you had to walk away from this job, from this career and never go back, would you? And I was like, I'm just trying to get through this shift, lady. <laughs> I'm just trying to like get through the day. And I was so triggered to the point where I thought about calling my work and saying, don't ever schedule me with that person again. Because what she said was true. And she was calling me out. You know what she was doing? She was challenging me. She was showing me a truth I wasn't owning to myself. And because I wasn't owning it, I was settling and I was living a boring life where I went to school. I went to like my part-time job. I had an average boring relationship. I, you know, ate and drank and that was it. I wasn't taking care of myself. I had no vision, no bigger plans. I was just going to go to like nursing school, graduate, get a job and do that the rest of my life. Maybe go on vacation like once in a while. That's what my plan was. Until this woman challenged me. And she was bold enough to say something that might change my life. And might have me be radically honest with myself for the first time ever. And make a different decision and be honest about with what I was doing and what I was creating for myself. And so I went back to the next shift with her and I said, hey, why did you say that? What did you mean? What do you mean I can't like nursing? I've been doing this, I'm getting it, why can't I like it? And she said, you weren't supposed to be doing nursing. She said, do you know how much potential you have? Do you know that you could be known around the world? This person I'd known for two weeks was telling me this. And I was like, how am I supposed to be known around the world? Like, how, wh what do you mean? Like, what do you mean I'm supposed to be known around the world? Again, I had no idea. Like this woman had just said that she had just moved into town and she was trying to get to know the area. That's why she worked at this place that we worked with, this home care agency. And she was like, do you know that you could be anything you want to be? And then she said, the question that will change my life forever. And it was, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you try? And I asked myself that, like, if I knew I couldn't fail, well, I would try anything. I would do something I love. I would try new things. I'd probably try a lot of new things. She said, well, you can do that. All options are possible. All possibilities are here and now. You get to decide what you want to take on or not. And she didn't say it with any attachment. She didn't say it with any expectation of what I would do. She, she just let me know. It was almost like she was just sharing a fact with me. And the rest was up to me. And so when I left work that day, I thought, okay, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? I would literally do anything. I would probably start taking care of myself more. I would go on a trip to Mexico with my friends at the last minute. And that's what I did. Until I came back and realized, Maria, you're not totally getting it. And then Two months later, when I saw the opening for a pageant, I asked myself again, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? I would enter. And then I placed in the top three. And then two months later, I was being crowned a local title holder and winning $500 scholarship and having media interviews and all of these opportunities falling into my lap. All because one woman challenged me. And she wasn't afraid if it would change the trajectory of my life. If it meant that I would be confused about the path that I had chosen or not even the path that I had chosen, the path that was pretty much chosen for me because I really didn't get much of a choice. You all know how it feels. 
you are a pageant gal in this community because you want to be challenged because you don't want to go back to the same way you've been doing things. And maybe it looks like being honest with yourself about the choices you're making, about the career you have, about the relationship you're in, about the friends you hang out with, about the habits you choose to do each day. That's for you to think about. But I'm here to challenge you, to show you what's possible and ask you the same question. If you knew from this moment forward, you couldn't fail. You couldn't fail at what it was you wanted to do. What would you dare to try? What would you have the courage to go after, to invest in, to look at differently? What would you have the courage to change, to let go of? And even if today it just starts with you being honest with yourself about the things that you actually like and don't like and what you're settling for versus what you're going for, I'm okay with that. And if it feels scary and like, okay, if what I'm doing, if certain things that I'm doing aren't what I wanted to be doing up until now, what do I do moving forward? Well, guess what? That's what we do in the pageant gal community, in my world, in my spaces. We show you what's possible moving forward. And we actually teach you how to be the queen of your life and what that looks like, what you want to do, who you're meant to be beyond what everybody has like told you to do and told you to be. They've told you, be like everybody else. Don't stand out too much. Be quiet. Go to school. Get a job. Get married. Whatever. Have kids. And then if you don't do that, they like put you down. And you just know that's not for you. The five points of being a pageant gal. The last one is that you want to be challenged. You can go to hundreds of other coaches online, other pageant pages, yeah, you're going to get some information. You're probably going to get some pageant questions, some good inspirational, educational three steps to nail your pageant interview. But are you being challenged? Are you being challenged for what you can really do and who you can really be? Because had that woman never challenged me seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, I might not ever have entered a pageant. I might not be an international title holder, coach, Queen. do full-time pageant coaching you think at that moment I knew I was gonna not be doing nursing and that I was gonna be a full-time pageant coach hell no she couldn't have even told me that she would have had no idea and you know what happened one of the first people I called the next day to tell that I won that pageant was her and I thanked her for challenging me and for showing me that I was not being the woman the queen I was meant to be and that it wasn't her responsibility to figure out what my next move was. That was for me to do. But I thanked her. Because without that, I might have not done that. I'm, it might have taken me years. I might have never done it. I might never be Maria the pageant gal. And leading the pageant gal community in all of you. But I get so much more excited when I see my pageant gals challenging themselves. Some of you have been shaking me the last couple of weeks. I see online and I'm like, these women are different. They're moving differently. They're showing up differently. The posts they're making, the way that they're, the, the initiatives that they're doing, even the way that like they're making their Instagram stories, I'm like, something's shifting in them and they're getting it and they're being challenged and they're realizing they're different and they're not like everybody else. And I'll tell them that, I'll message them and be like, oh, this is what I'm talking about. And I thought if we're doing that for a couple of women who are really getting it, how can we do that for everybody? Because that's available to all of us. It's all of our birthright. It's available to every single one of us. No matter where you live, how much money you have in your account, where you're at in your journey, what you're doing with your career, doesn't matter. We all get to have this, this abundance, this lifestyle. Being a pageant gal is not winning a crown. It's not going to a pageant or being at a competition or winning the competition. It's not passing on the crown. Being a pageant gal is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle where you get to choose that you're different, that your story matters, that you move differently than everybody else, that you're meant to live a big life, that you like to be challenged and changed. It's a lifestyle where you always keep your chin up and your crown on and you know your crown is in your heart. It's not out there. It starts with who you want to be and owning that all of this is available to you. And it doesn't matter when it all shows up because it's all here now and you know it's on its way. That is what it means to be a pageant gal. If this live has changed your life, I want you to make 
your hashtag I am a pageant gal post in our Facebook group. And I want you to share who you are. Your name, a, like the most beautiful and favorite photo that you've ever taken of yourself. Maybe it's a new photo that you haven't yet taken because you haven't yet known all of these details. And then what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you standing for? Are you going to a pageant? Do you stand for a movement? What are you calling in in the next 12 months? Where do you want to be 12 months from now? And then you share your Instagram handle so we can watch you conquer it and take it all. I told you after this, I just don't know how you're going to go back to what you were doing before. Even if what you were doing before was awesome and badass and queen like, it's about to 10x and I want to see you do that. Because what you're meant to do is big and it's different. It's not like everybody else. And if you want more support in doing this and being part of the pageant gal community, you are so welcome to join our Win the Crown membership where we already have our first training out and our first assignment dropping next week. And we have monthly group coaching calls to not only support the moves that you're making, but also give you specific and direct feedback so you know exactly what you're doing moving forward, exactly what to focus on so that you can feel seen and celebrated in a community in a bigger and more lifelike type of way that isn't just on social media where you're like leaning back and seeing what everyone else is doing. You're actually in the room. You're a part of the change. You're a part of the movement. And if you're like, I'm ready to explode with what is possible for me and I need support and I'm ready to go all in, whether it's on your pageant journey, your platform, what it is you're meant to do with life and you want more direct, intimate support and you're looking to invest in one-on-one -on -one coaching support for the next three months, I want you to DM me. What do I want you to DM me? DM me, pageant gal. If you are ready to truly embody and understand what it means to have the five pillars of being a pageant gal, to embody and live this lifestyle so the next time you show up to your pageant, you know exactly what you're going in with and who you are and what you stand for. There are spaces available now until the end of the year. And then at the end of the year, the prices are going up because we're calling in a different type of movement moving forward. Okay, pageant gals, like this, go and make your Facebook group post. I cannot wait to like it and celebrate and follow you and watch all of the amazing things that you're doing. And as well, share with me your insights. If you had a huge breakthrough or insight, share with me either in the comment section or you can send me a DM. I always love to hear the breakthroughs that you're having and what you're going through so that I can continue to show you and mirror to you what is possible when you challenge yourself and when you own your identity of being in this community as a pageant gal. I love you all. I cannot wait to see you in our next live, in our next training, in our Win the Crown membership, wherever it is. But always remember, chin up, crown on, and go conquer the day.